Tinubu triumphs after 171 day battle. That is our first hot topic this morning. After 171 days of battle with uncertainty, President Bola Tinubu has triumphed as he is affirmed as president. We also have another hot topic which is that the court has lifted the ban on IPOP and awards Kano 8 billion naira. Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on the show this morning. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. It's always a pleasure knowing that you are there and watching us and it's a weekend. We're hoping that you're going to unwind after working hours. Um, we're wishing you a happy weekend in advance. Wherever you are watching us from, whatever you're doing right now, we hope that today will be a very rewarding and fulfilling day for you. So we'll go straight to what is trending or what caught our fancy, as we always say, on uh, top trending. The Supreme Court uh, uh, verdict, what transpired in Nigeria since February 25 presidential election, is a clear statement that our institutions are not working. That is according to Labour Party, and uh, it caught our fancy. The Labour Party has reacted to the Supreme Court judgment, which affirmed the election of Bola Tinubu as the president of Nigeria. Labour Party's chairman, Julius Abure, who addressed a press conference after the Apex Court dismissed the appeals by the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atikwa Bubakar, and his LP counterpart, Peter Obi, claimed that the judiciary and legislature have been captured by the executive. Abure also claimed that what has transpired in Nigeria since the February 25 presidential election is a clear testament that the institutions are not working. Aside from alleging that some leaders of the party, including himself and Obi, have been marked by the government for vilification and in order to suppress the party and its goal for a new Nigeria, he also called on the international community to rise to the occasion to defend democracy in Nigeria. Meanwhile, um, this uh, story also uh, was a story of interest or is a story of interest to us. I won't negotiate with bandits, Governor Rada. Uh, you know, Governor Umar Rada is of Katsina State and he said that his administration won't in any way negotiate with bandits. Rada, who said this when he visited the Chief of Defense Staff, uh, CDS, General Christopher Musa, in his office on Thursday, October 26, said his administration would rather apply sufficient military force to compel the bandits to come to the negotiating table. He said his administration would employ both kinetic and non-kinetic approaches to address the issue, but we'll only negotiate from a point of greatest advantage. He said that uh, they are going to put so much pressure on the bandits that it's the bandits that will be asking to come to the table. Rata commended the military for their role in ensuring security in the state and across the country, adding that he has launched the Community Security Watch in the state to complement the efforts of the military and other security agencies in the ongoing battle against bandits. The Senate confirms Musa Aliyu as ICPC chairman is another headline that we'd like to look at. The appointment of Mala Musa Aliyu as the chairman, Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, ICPC, has been confirmed by the Senate. This comes after the adoption of a motion by the Senate leader, Senator Okoyemi Bamidele, APC Ekiti, at the Committee of the Whole on Thursday, October 26, that was yesterday. Bamidele, who urged the Senate to consider the, the request of President Bola Tinubu for the confirmation of Aliyu for appointment as ICPC chairman, said the request was in accordance with Section 3, Subsection 6 of the Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission ICPC Establishment Act 2000. He also asked the Senate to consider Tinubu's request to confirm the appointment of Mr. Saka Suleiman and Professor Gaji Dantata as members of the Federal Judicial Service Commission before the appointments were confirmed. We know that Deputy President of the Senate, Barao Jibrin, who presided over plenary in his remarks, said that the appointment was a call to service and he urged them not to disappoint the President and Nigerians while urging them to bring their best to the service of the country.
So ICPC, EFCZ has a new boss, ICPC has a new boss. We hope that the fight against corruption will be taken a notch higher and then we will have a country um, that will be rid of uh, corruption, at least to, to, re to be reduced to the barest minimum let people see that they are working and we do hope that uh, they are going to finish their tenures with a good name and an impeccable record because we've seen so far that people who sit there are more or less like on the hot seat the efcc icpc we do hope that these people will be principled enough and they will um, do their jobs and then Nigerians will have the confidence that they need to have in organizations or agencies like this that corruption is being fought. We know also, like according to uh, Ngozi okonjo uh, corruption fights back as well. But when corruption fights back, we do hope that they have the arsenal that they're going to withstand the fight against corruption. Uh, Lagos State Government reduced demolition of structures on the drainage system on Lekki to Ikota Channel. Uh, Lagos State Government yesterday, October 26, resumed, resumed the demolition of structures on the drainage system on the Lekki to Ikota Channel. It is in its bid to stop the perennial flooding witnessed in the area, the state government on October 14 began the demolition of houses built on the drainage channel. The exercise has seen many residents homeless after their properties were demolished. But the state government has said it will not be compensating the owners of the demolished houses because they were duly informed that their houses were obstructing the free flow of rainwater into the drainage system. The, sister, the, the question we keep asking is who grants the permit for these people to build these houses? Because sometimes some of these people have permits that will look original. We, we do not know what makes it not to be original because it was offered purportedly by the office that needs to offer the permits for buildings to be built uh, on particular places. I know some places where it, it was reserved that nobody should ever build there because of the type of land that is there or the critical uh, role it is playing in draining the water from the communities uh, and onto the ocean. But people are building on them and they are, they are doing these jobs. It's not like they're hiding to do it. They're, they're erecting estates. They are building very, very big houses in those places. And nobody seems to say anything until the houses are complete, people are living there and all that. Now we see that when X is marked on a building, it's just um, another way of saying, come and see us at the office. Because after that, people will continue building, even with that mark of X on the building, which was supposed to be like stop work. They actually write there, stop work, and the work will go on while the people at the office or wherever else they see them will be seen. And then the work will continue until maybe 10 years later, uh, this kind of a thing will come when a new government has come and they want to show working and we see people's houses being demolished. Now, when these houses are demolished, how are those people who offered or who gave the uh, permits uh, brought to book? How much of these people have been prosecuted by the government? Because there is no way the government wants to find out that it will not find out who gave the permit for these people to build houses where they build the houses. If it is a Bale that gave the permit, you need to prosecute him. If it is a, someone from an office that is in charge of giving lands, maybe Minister of Lands or something, find that person out, prosecute the person so that these things never happen anymore. Lagos, yes, we're, we are proud of the land of aquatic splendor, as we like to describe Lagos. But that also means that there isn't much land. So people take advantage of any small place that they see, whether it is dangerous or not dangerous, and whether they do uh, integrity tests or some not. They just want to build somewhere because even if you're not living there, you're going to make a lot of money renting out the houses. Or at least you're going to save a lot of money uh, because you don't need to live in someone else's house anymore. And so many reasons make people build in every small space that they find. But we have to do something. The by saying we, it is the government. The government is you and I. Everybody has to do something uh, about this. 
it's, a, it's bad enough that our houses collapse almost on a daily basis or on a weekly basis and people die, people are rendered homeless, uh, lives are ruined and all that. But when we see that it's avoidable, let us try to avoid it. And the people, unfortunately, who build in these places that are not supposed to have any buildings on them uh, happen to be people who are supposed to be aware people who are elitist, people who are rich enough to buy land anywhere, people who do not need to live very close to their offices because they can always have a car that will take them there. They don't even need to get to work at 7 o'clock like some of us will have to get to work so early because they are men of their own. So why the craze of building in any small space, whether the government says um, it should not be used for buildings or not? And also, it, it brings us to the fact that everybody needs to know what really this uh, uh, plan for Lagos or of Lagos is. Because more often than not, we've heard that um, maybe one or two governors have veered off the master plan. We need to know what this master plan is, where what is supposed to be. If everybody has this document, there is no possibility or there's little possibility that people will build in a place that they know for sure that even if they don't get demolished, the houses don't get demolished um, very soon, uh, with time, uh, maybe when they even need uh, these uh, houses more, they may be demolished. So let us see this master plan of Lagos. Let us know what it is. And let that document be in public glare so that people can see. Everybody can just, at the click of a button, you go to the Lagos master plan. You see where residential buildings are supposed to be, where it is reserved and buildings are not supposed to be. So if you review this plan, maybe every five years or every 10 years, because a plan that was made 20 years ago may not be as good as it was then when we're looking at it now. So it needs to be reviewed. And whenever it's reviewed, we get to see those places that have been reclaimed and will be good enough for building or one thing that has changed from what it used to be 20 years ago and all that. But this document should be for everybody to see. If it is for everybody to see, then keep telling us and reminding us where to find it so that everybody can have access to this document. We don't want a situation where you spend maybe a hundred million or more to build a house and it is demolished because the government has the power to do so. A lot of people will be rendered homeless, a lot of people might even die maybe of a heart attack or something, but we should know what to do and then when the time comes we are not to blame. There are people in offices that actually um, issue these licenses or these uh, permits or anything and people go to build in those places. Nobody can just jump into any land to build. There must be somebody who directed him to that place and these people too should be fished out. That's why I like the fact that the P&ID case, uh, it has been said that the people who were all involved in Nigeria were going to be fished out and prosecuted. It's not enough to say that um, that deal was done fraudulently. Who did it? Who are those people? Name and shame them and prosecute them accordingly. But we fear as Nigerians that we've seen situations where some names are being hoarded when they talk about um, Boko Haram and bandits and all that. Sometimes politicians will come and say, we know these people, but when we say Nigeria will burn, let it burn. A lot of things have happened in Nigeria. We didn't burn. So let's get to know these people and see. Maybe some of them are the ones that we are seeing as angels. Um, and then we find out that they are the ones that are killing Nigeria. Let's get to know these people. It's not every time that someone steals a bottle of oil uh, to go and cook rice or something and then he's put to jail 50 years and then someone who is stealing too, too much money is left to just roam the streets. Someone who doesn't care whether the roads are bad and people get accidents there and die uh, is just roaming the free, streets free. And we are the ones uh, that are bearing the brunt of all that. So everybody who is guilty of anything should be prosecuted and diligent investigations should be done before anybody is even being arrested, not to arrest people and then start to find evidence against them like something that happened to the, um, the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. He may have committed crimes and all that, but he was put in jail as it is, and then evidences were now starting to come out. 
He was put in jail because of uh, um, an arm scandal. He was owning some guns, according to the DSS and all that. And after that, that was dropped and something else was used against him. We need to do our due diligence before we can, um, we can, we can arrest anybody. We can, we can try to bring someone to book. Otherwise, people will still be thinking it's witch hunt all the time. And if it's, this is done, it means that the confidence of the people will not be in all these agencies. And once there is no trust, you cannot succeed in anything. Government may not succeed, the agencies may not succeed because nobody wants to give you information and you are supposed to gather intelligence to do what you are supposed to do. And nobody trusts you enough to, do, uh, to give you that information because, hey, they might even get into trouble doing that. And we've seen that a lot in Nigeria. So if we need our Nigeria to move forward, those who are guilty must face the music. Those who do well must be commended. And that's why I like what um, President Muhammad Buhari, the former President Muhammad Buhari did, calling people uh, together and giving them an award. I have a friend who had a national award just because he came by money that was not his, and that money was supposed to be like his salary for about uh, 30 or so years. The money he was being paid and the one that he picked, as we say, uh, could pay him for like 30 years and more and with a better salary but he returned it integrity was awarded or rewarded and people who a lady in the airport who picked the same amount of money or something and then returned it all these people were being recognized so things like that are the things that we need to recognize all the time and the people who do wrong should be named and shamed and when they're taken to jail for doing or committing a crime Let's not hear one amnesty or the other, the six months they are out. Then I will, I will want to go and steal a billion dollars and then know that after one year I'm out of jail and I come back to enjoy my money. That shouldn't be. That is what Nigerians are crying, that it should never be. If you are guilty, face the music. Now, um, we also have, following what uh, the, the court ruling yesterday was, the Supreme Court ruling yesterday, and we know that this has set a precedent. Anything else that happens in the future will, will have a reference to this judgment. So um, whatever it is that you were thinking about matters like this, then you know how the outcome will be in subsequent years. So the presidency, OB and Atiku, will wait till 2031. That's according to Ganduje, the chairman of the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, Abdullahi Ganduje. He stated that the Supreme Court judgment upholding the election of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is proof that February 25 presidential election was not manipulated, as claimed by the opposition. And reacting to the Apex Court's uh, judgment, Ganduje, in a statement released by his Chief Press Secretary, Edwin Olofu, asked the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abubakar, and that of the Labour Party, LP, Peter Obi, to wait till 2031, when Tinubu would have rounded off his second term. He called on Atiku and Obi to bury the hatchets and uh, join hands with the President Tinubu to reposition the country towards sustainable growth and development. He said, and I quote, Nigeria belongs to all of us. It is our responsibility as patriots to pull our resources together to move the country forward. I congratulate both Atiku and Obi on their dogged fight in extending the frontiers of our democracy and law. This is democracy. Tinubu's victory is another victory for democratic rule in the country. There is still room for both Obi and Atiku to actualize their presidential aspiration after the second term tenor of President Tinubu in 2031. That's uh, the statement, part of the statement, that's how it read. Okay, I will not comment on that. Um, it's self-explanatory, you know what he implied and all that. But we hope for a better Nigeria. Whoever is at the helm of affairs is not the issue. What the person at the helm of affairs does is the issue. We do hope that this, this crazy uh, economic situation will get back to normal and then Nigerians will have a new lease of life. We hear at uh, this time that the dollar is 1,300 naira in some quarters and even more in some other places. We hope 
that this will not be the situation when we enter 2024. It's not even Christmas yet and people cannot buy anything. We're just barely trying to survive by getting the food that we are going to eat. And companies are struggling. Staff are not being paid in so many places. Some are being laid off and all that. We don't want this kind of situation because at the end of 2023, the employment or unemployment rate will go very, very high. And that is not a good situation in a country struggling with security issues, economic issues, and everything, food security even, and all that. So everybody who is uh, at the, at, or in any position to do something should do something, beginning with all of us in our private closets, in our private rooms, we begin to think Nigeria and think positive about Nigeria. Okay, we'll take a short break now. When we return, we'll be looking at the headlines on our national dailies on Off the Press. Stay with us.